Well, hi there. I'm gonna lead off by saying that if you want a pet frog, it is very unlikely that you will find a better one than a fire-bellied toad. Before I get too deep into the fire-bellied toad, I will tell you I will refer to them as toads, for they are called fire-bellied toads, but I want you to know that I, I find this to be complete and utter garbage. Because these are not toads. They're, they're not true toads anyway. Historically, any lumpy-skinned frog was lumped into a big group called toads, but these, these are more closely related to lots of non-lumpy-skinned frogs than they are to the monophyletic group Bufonidae, or the genus Bufo, which are your true toads. So these are, these are not at all true toads. These are lumpy frogs. But I will refer to them as both frogs and toads today, just to prevent any catastrophic controversy from occurring. These are just, if not the greatest little frogs, very nearly the greatest little frogs. For one thing, they're beautiful. I mean, if you really look at them, yes, they're green and frogs are notoriously green, but if you really look at them up close, they're gorgeous, right? The dark black and the bright greens or dark greens, it, it's very, very striking. There are dart frogs with this exact same color combination that are obviously glorious, and these are, are just that. But then you flip them over, if you didn't like green and black, how about bright orange and black? Because they've got that going on too, and you even get just a tiny bit at the tips of each one of their, their fingers and toes. Just a little bit of that orange peeking out, and of course you can see it on their throat whenever they rear up. But they don't rear up very often because that's usually a threat display, and these guys are super bold super not concerned about you. They will eat right out of your hands. They approach you. They are so dang personable. Uh, it just, it really, as far as personality goes, no frog is better than this. There is no frog with a better personality than a fire-bellied toad. They're so cute. They're so active, active during the day. They're just everything you could want in a pet frog. Other than being a frog and having the associated amphibian issues, this thing is just perfect. And that might be their only flaw, because everybody in their bearded dragon has a fire-bellied toad. Just like beardies, it isn't an accident. Fire-bellied toads are common because they make spectacular pets. But is the fire-bellied toad the best pet frog? And is it the best pet frog for you? To help you figure this out, we are going to score the fire-bellied toad based on our five categories, which are Handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the fire-bellied toad a score of three out of five. Okay, so here's the deal. The main problem with handling fire-bellied toads is that they are amphibians. Amphibians just don't get a five. If they could, white tree frogs would have received a five. The problem is their permeable skin. Any chemicals or pathogens on your hands get into your frog. Thus, if you're going to handle an amphibian, you should wash your hands really well and be sure to wash off any soap very thoroughly. Or better yet, you should wear gloves. And this is for the protection of your amphibian. Now, fire-bellied toads are poisonous. That is actually why they have bright orange bellies. These guys are cryptically colored on top, though I would argue very beautiful, but when they are discovered by a potential predator, they do something called Unken reflex, where they arch their backs and expose what lies beneath, which is, in this case, a bright orange and black aposematic belly. Aposematic colorations are colors and patterns that indicate toxicity or other danger to would-be predators. We actually have a whole video on aposematic coloration, and uh, it's stinking rad, so you should probably check that out too. But these toads do produce poison. That isn't a big deal unless, and you should be taking notes here, you eat your toad. Or, as is probably more likely, you hold your toad and then put your fingers in your mouth or rub your eyes. This probably wouldn't kill you or leave you permanently blind, but I would avoid it anyway. Just wash your hands well before handling the toad for the toad and after handling the toad for you. And resist the urge to put it in your mouth. You know who you are. Other than that, the toad is harmless. It can jump a bit, but they're low-key and don't jump super far. Don't lose it, though. Your house is probably not a suitable amphibian habitat. They don't have a dangerous bite, and they won't bite you unless they think that you're food. 
They will know that you are the source of food and will approach for food like cute little toad dogs, but they won't generally mistake you for food. They don't have any claws with which to scratch. They're big enough to not be smashed too easily, but do be careful with them. Honestly, if you can keep the toad and its toadliness out of your mouth and eyes, they aren't gonna hurt you at all. The main reason to keep handling to a minimum is for their benefit. They are amphibians. I'd like to take a moment to just say thank you to our patrons at Patreon. Last week, we actually took in these three firebelly toads as well as a number of other animals that needed to be rehomed, and we're rehoming them here in the reptile room. And surprisingly to us, they all came without enclosures. Uh, this is partially because they were all being housed together in one giant enclosure, and it was a whole bunch of different species. And so, just like that, we had to run out and get a whole bunch of enclosures. And I will tell you, we are so grateful for Patreon, who makes it possible for us to do things like that on such short notice. And to try to pay it forward to you guys, we have a whole slew of features for our rad fans and stinking rad fans, just to say thank you. So, if you're interested in any of that, or just helping us out with this channel and you know, with rescues like this, please check out our Patreon and, and consider supporting us. When it comes to care, we give the Firebelly Toad a score of five out of five. Care for these guys is fantastic. They can be housed very simply, but the most worthwhile enclosures would be glass aquaria with a lid. And this is because they're very, very active and you want to watch them and you also don't want them to escape. Have a bowl of clean, chemical-free, treated water, or a water feature with the same. These guys are excellent swimmers, which is a big benefit to these over other similarly fun frogs like dart frogs. I say similarly fun because these guys, like dart frogs, will be very active and interactive during the day. And if you haven't seen it, we do have at least one video on dart frogs and more coming. In fact, being active during the day is something that they have in common with dart frogs that makes them, and dart frogs, much more fun than most pet frogs. Another benefit to these over dart frogs is that they can eat about anything they can fit into their mouths. This should be mostly appropriately sized insects, but they will eat pinky mice if you offer them. They eat like boas. Honestly, they eat better than boas. They will eat from tongs or fingers. They come right to you for food. Be sure to dust feeders with calcium and vitamins at times. Honestly, just try to avoid obesity. I did say they need a lid, Again, your house is not a suitable amphibian habitat. These aren't climbers like tree frogs, but they are moist, and moist little frogs stick to things. These are great candidates for bioactive enclosures and paludariums. We have built videos on each of those that would work great, so you should totally check that out. Be sure the substrate can hold some moisture without molding, and it won't stick too much to your toad. Something else that makes them better than most frogs is their call. I love frog calls. I love when I get to hear them calling here in the reptile room. But at 2.30 a.m. every morning, it won't be your favorite sound. Most frogs inflate their vocal sac to create a resonance chamber like you see on a drum or a subwoofer. This makes their call very unpleasant at 2.30. The fire-bellied toad simply makes the quietest little bark. Because they're cute little toad dogs without the resonance chamber. Do you hear it? They also do great at room temperature, so unless you live somewhere really cold, you shouldn't need any heat for them. They're just amazing. When it comes to hardiness, we give the firebelly toad a score of five out of five. These are hardy little guys for amphibians. In most cases, they live over a decade. Be careful with handling. Don't cook them or dry them out. Keep your water clean and chemical free, and they should do very well. When it comes to availability, we give the fire belly toad a score of four out of five. In the past, these were everywhere, but not so much right now. And it's just as well. Imports will suffer from normal import problems. They can put stress on native populations, and perhaps most importantly, they can bring in exotic amphibian diseases that can devastate native species and the rest of your amphibian collection. If no more are imported, that's fine by me. These guys can have up to 400 babies at a time, and they breed readily in captivity. We don't need to import these guys. Find a breeder and get yourself some spectacular little toads. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Firebelly Toad a score of five out of five. These guys are dirt cheap as imports, 
But when you have 400 little insect vacuums to feed, you're not gonna price gouge much. The enclosure can be beautiful, but it doesn't need to be very expensive. Mm, that's pretty much it. A water bowl or a feature, maybe a hide, water conditioner, vitamins and calcium, substrate that won't mold, a decent lid, cleanup crew for bioactive setups. Bam, you're done. And that is why overall we give the fire-bellied toad a score of 4.4 out of five. Is this the best pet frog? Honestly, there isn't anything that is obviously better. They are easy, interactive, quiet, and beautiful. They are frogs, that is their only issue. But if what you want is a frog with a great personality that keeps quiet and begs you for food like a cute little toad puppy, then the fire-bellied toad might be the best pet frog for you. Just don't put it in your mouth. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Did you hear it?